With so many widths, tire treads, and even hidden considerations such as threads per inch, getting the right gravel tires can seem like a daunting process. And seeing as they're the only thing keeping you stuck to the trail, or getting the right ones, it's kind of important. <coughs> Thankfully, our sponsors for this video, WTB, have sent me a bunch of options so that we can run through all of the considerations you need to make, whether you're upgrading or building your dream gravel bike. Once you know what type of gravel tire is right for you, why not check out our video where we reviewed 11 different models. It's in the card above and in the description below. But you might be thinking, why do I need to upgrade? Surely my gravel bike came with a brilliant set of tires. Well, this isn't always the case, and some bike brands will save a bit of money by fitting lesser tires. We say it a lot here at Bike Radar, but upgrading your tire can make some of the biggest impacts on your cycling. And when it comes to riding off-road, the changes between tires are even more noticeable. It's also fair to say that gravel riding covers a broad range of ride experiences, which vary from place to place. Gravel riding in the US is often painted as a picture of miles and miles of perfect and unpopulated roads. UK gravel, well, let's just say it's a bit more rugged, adventurous, character building, if you will. Want to know what it's like? Check out the video in the card above or in the link in the description. Hard packed dirt roads may be as smooth as pavement, trails might have embedded rocks or loose gravel, and some so-called gravel rides may take cyclists onto stretches of mountain bike single track. There's a lot of terrain out there and choosing the right set of tires for your bike and the type of riding that you typically do is the most effective way to boost your confidence, add comfort to your bike, and even get you riding a bit faster. But what is there to consider? I'll end with one that you might not have thought of, but we'll start with the big one. Protection from thorns, lower tire pressures, and a decreased risk of pinch punctures. The reasons for opting for a tubeless setup for off-road riding are pretty convincing. For us, the question of tubeless or clincher for a gravel bike has been pretty much settled now. So if you're upgrading tires and you haven't yet made the jump, then we'd highly recommend doing so. If you're new to tubeless, then this is basically just replacing the old inner tube with liquid tubeless sealant. Now you might need a few specific tools to do the job, but in our experience, it's becoming easier than ever before. So it's no wonder that tubeless is really popular with gravel riders. Almost all gravel bike tires are tubeless compatible, though it's always worth double checking before you buy, as well as making sure that your wheels are tubeless compatible if you're making the switch from inner tubes. We're in the process of making a video guide on how to set up road and gravel tubeless tires, so make sure that you're subscribed and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss that. The width of your gravel bike tires, and hence the tire volume, will make a massive difference to how your bike rides. From narrow 35 mm tires right the way through to mountain bike tires measured in inches, you've now got a huge range to choose from. The frame and fork will probably be your limiting factor to how wide you can go, but should you be going as wide as possible? We took a look at whether a wider gravel tire was actually faster. There will be a link to that video popping up at the end, so definitely go and check that out. But there's more to life than speed. For many riders, grip, comfort, performance on chunky gravel, they'll all be far more important than saving a few seconds to rolling resistance. Now, for some people, the comfort and added grip and confidence of a wider gravel tire could translate to a faster ride overall. Go super wide and you'll start to talk about your tire width in inches. Mountain bike tires are often chosen for use on 650B wheels and something as wide as WTB's Ranger at 2.25 inches would provide extra cushioning on the roughest trails. The wider you go, the lower tire pressure you can run. 
That will increase the contact patch with the dirt, boosting your grip, improving comfort, and making rougher surfaces much more pleasant to ride. Rim width will actually influence how a given tire measures up. Go for a modern gravel bike rim with something like a 23mm internal rim width and you'll find that it causes the tyre to sit a little wider than what is stated on the sidewall. One note on using wider rubber, just make sure that you leave enough space between the tyre and the frame for debris and mud. The official minimum clearance is 6mm and while you might be tempted to maximise your tyre width beyond this, you do run the risk of damaging your frame or fork and we don't. If you'd like to maximize your tire size, then you can employ a cunning trick by reaching for a set of 650B wheels. With a smaller rim diameter than the regular 700C wheel, 650B hoops simply leave more space in tight frames and forks. That said, the latest gravel bikes are increasingly addressing this with bigger clearance for 700C wheels. If you're considering switching from 700C to a 650B wheel set, First, make sure that your bike is compatible with both wheel sizes. 700C wheel sets tend to be chosen by riders who are seeking efficiency over longer rides or ride predominantly on roads and smoother gravel tracks. On the other hand, if tire width and volume are important, a 650B wheel set might give you more options just to go wider. They're brilliant for softening the ride on the gnarliest gravel, so definitely consider them if the rough stuff is where you ride. Nothing gives me more confidence on a wet ride than a big mud tire with big bitey knobs. But nothing feels worse than that same mud tire on a nice dry trail like this. Getting the right tread pattern for your riding is a great way to ensure that you boost your confidence, your grip, and maybe even your speed. Let's take a look at a few options to help you know what you're looking for. A slick tyre, like this WTB Byway, features very little tread, especially on this central section. It's best suited to bone dry conditions, but that isn't the whole story. Hard packed ground is where a tyre like this will work best. If you're cornering on loose gravel or dusty surfaces, more shoulder knobs will help produce more grip as they dig into the surface. But if you're looking for the fastest rolling tyres for smooth gravel and tarmac, something like this is what you want. My favourite type of tread pattern is an intermediate one. This WTB Resolute mixes a tightly spaced central tread pattern with larger knobs at the side. That gives you a great mix of fast rolling, but also grip in wet or loose conditions. The result is a tyre that will see you through a wide range of conditions, and it is this that makes these all-rounder tyres a very popular choice. If your cycling year is going to consist of a lot of racing, you could opt for a tyre like the WTB Volpine. Again, the aim here is to keep the central knobs tightly spaced for lower rolling resistance. Next tyre. Right, there you go, thank you very much. Sometimes, well, a lot of the time for us here in the UK, water falls from the sky and makes the ground rather slippery. But rain would never stop us from having fun and this is where wet weather tyres like the WTB Sendero come in. Sendero, Spanish for trail. Wet weather tyres feature tall, widely spaced knobs. These are designed to really bite down into the dirt, providing as much traction as possible. The wide spacing then allows the tyre to clear that mud so that you don't get all clogged up. The trade-off for this extra traction is often a bit of extra rolling resistance, but if you regularly ride in the wet, we'd recommend these tyres for more control, even if rolling resistance takes a bit of a hit. So that's all conditions covered. So surely you can just go out and buy them all. Well, tires can be quite expensive. It's worth investing in a good set for sure, but having separate sets for dry, intermediate, and then wet weather too, could just mean that you spend more time switching tires than actually, you know, riding your bike. The solution that has worked for me is to run an intermediate tread for the majority of the year, and then have a full mud tire ready to switch in when the rain falls. That, for me, is a great way to have a brilliant setup for the widest range of conditions without spending too much money. 
but this might change depending on your riding conditions. There are some of us here at Bike Radar that prefer riding on the road, but mixing in some off-road terrain to keep things exciting and to explore new places. For this, a faster slick tire setup might be a better option. Now, getting into the finer details, the construction of the casing on your tires can have a surprisingly big impact on comfort, grip, and rolling resistance. The crucial number that we're looking for here is the TPI figure. That stands for threads per inch, and it is quite simply a measure of the number of nylon or cotton threads that you'd find if you cut out a square inch from your tire. Please don't do that though, as the manufacturer should provide this information before you buy. As a general rule, the more threads that a casing has per inch, the more supple the tire is going to be. That's going to give you increased grip as the tire will be better able to deform over small imperfections and it should also boost comfort. But there is a trade-off. High 120 TPI tires can be a little more prone to punctures. This is because lower TPI tires generally use bigger threads which are just a bit stronger. To aid puncture protection, WTB's high TPI tires, such as these Nanos, use a puncture protection layer under the tread. That would be something that we'd look for when upgrading your tires. At the start of the video, I said that there was something that you might not have thought of. I was referring to tire inserts. These are in essence simply pieces of foam that sit inside the tire, running the full circumference of the rim. They are certainly easy to forget. After all, they're hidden away inside your tires, but using them carries some real benefits. Firstly, you can run lower tire pressures while still protecting your rims from root and rock impacts. Those lower pressures are very useful in adverse conditions or when you are riding on loose surfaces. Secondly, and this is particularly beneficial when running lower pressures, inserts can help with bead retention. Let's face it, sometimes you might go into a corner a bit hot. You turn in, load the tire more than maybe you should, and the result can be that a little air burps out. That's not ideal as you've just deflated your tire a bit. And if you puncture, you really don't want the tire dismounting from the rim. Inserts can help to keep the bead on the rim, reducing air burps and allowing you to roll safely to a stop should you have a puncture. They really are a very good idea. With all of that said, do you have any golden rules when buying new gravel tires? Let me know down in the comments below. If you're buying your first set though, I think we have some key takeaways for you to use. Firstly, if you haven't gone tubeless, then we'd really recommend it. Width will play a massive role in how your bike rides, but be careful of going too wide as your frame and forks can be a limiting factor. Those, for us, are the two main factors when it comes to buying new tires. But there are other considerations to make, such as tread pattern and casing. And if you want to maximize the ability of your tires, inserts are a brilliant way to do so. Thanks again to WTB for supplying us with all of these tires and for making this video possible. Remember to like this video before you go and why not check out our other gravel tire width explainer right here. We'll see you in the next one.